Hey, hi, it's me. I'm back. And uh, I was away for a little while because I got weirded out because some of my videos started doing well and I was gaining subscribers. And when I gain subscribers, I get worried. I don't know. I mean, I think about I think about Chapel Roan, and I'm like, girl, I don't even know how how you can do that, how you can deal with that. I gain like ten subscribers. I'm like, oh shit, shut this down. I can't handle it. <laughs> and then I think, why am I doing this? Why am I making these videos? And I think, well, if people see this and subscribe, then I can show my art. Then I'll have a, a reason for making art. Because right now, I don't have a reason. I just make it. And I don't show it to anybody in my real life, out in the world. And so the only, hello, so the only way that anything gets um, the only purpose. Well, in the past, the only purpose of making art was doodling in my sketchbook. And so now, at least I can show my art to you guys. But I don't have any to show right now. I don't have any to show. I left this on my table. Let me move that over. All right. Table topic questions. Let's see. Just select random, random table topic. Oh no, wait. All right, one minute. Start now. Is it more difficult for you to speak kindly or honestly? Is it more, is it more difficult for you to speak kindly or honestly? Oh my God, what if being kind is honest? What, what, what's, the, what's the question? Uh, I don't know, I'm autistic. Half the time I think I'm being kind and it comes across as being mean, and then I'm honest, but I mean it in a kind way. And that's a, I can't, I can't answer that question. I have no clue. I have no clue what kind or honest is. Yeah. It, it, it all depends on the other person. I'm always kind, I think. If I saw someone draw something really bad and one minute's over, if I saw something, if someone did something drawn bad, that would be hard for me to be. Have you ever tried to give a compliment to somebody and you just didn't know? You're like, oh, that's, that's probably what a lot of people think when they see my artwork. Here's some random thing that I'm working on. Is this, you're, you're sitting there, you're like, okay, good, good job. Uh, that looks really um, interesting. Thanks, thanks for being kind and not honest. This, this is actually, I actually kind of am digging it. If you've seen my videos in the past, you'll recognize the two eyes as being part of a, part of an old painting that I did drawing. And I tore it up and I still have some of the other elements. But I kind of like it. I like that I'm at that stage where I like it. But it's obviously not done and finished. Like, I mean, this is literally just on a cardboard, so it's like, um, the white is gesso, and then there's notebook paper from a note. There's an upside down note. Like, you know, you write your, uh, you write your list for your groceries or whatever. So I put that there, and then the eye, uh, I like that it's, 
like this very very finished over there and then there's like not finished and that's a good a good what's the word it's, it's, a, it's an artist word that artists love to use though a lot what's the word it's not duality i love the dichotomy i love the dichotomy of those images look at the finished over here and then the unfinished and that's kind of completely completely done or anything so there's like more that I could do but again again this is what I'm trying not to do which is not put too much time or effort into anything that's why I'm playing around on cardboard so yeah yeah realization the difference is that a lot of the neurotypicals go through this realization much earlier on and they get through it a lot quicker and and they join the gang they join the violence and the lies and autistic people aren't as good at that I was literally saying Last night, I feel like I live in upside down world. I have the personality of SpongeBob. I'm the last person that should be struggling to find work. <laughs> you have the personality of SpongeBob. And so, SpongeBob is a highly employable animated cartoon. Is that what you're saying? It's like F everyone else. If, oh, I don't have my contacts and I can't read right now. It's like if everyone else is living in a secret cult, and when you try to expose them, they deny everything, even if it's kind of obvious. But those are the secret cult rules. Never break character, ever. You know when I try to get my girlfriend to discuss rules of engagement, such as why someone makes a certain tone, or how a specific sentence could have meant a few things. 
out of which I choose the wrong one. She becomes exasperated, says normal people don't talk about it, and tells me to get help. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they actively conspire to pretend it doesn't exist. Sounds like your girlfriend isn't conspiring to pretend it doesn't exist. It's just she believes that nobody has to fucking talk about it. She's saying it exists, but everyone just knows. But it's a frustrating thing when you don't know, when you don't pick up on it. I think they get exasperated because they don't truly know the why. They just know that this is what you do because they accept and copy, not question. I actually think that's probably true. I think that's probably true. Why would you question that which is obvious? Except, except it's not. Why would you question that which is obvious? But it's not obvious to them. It's not obvious to them. They just don't have, they don't have that extreme need to know why, because they can, they can fake it until they make it. The worst thing that I was told, or, you know, that's the worst concept, fake it till you make it, because to a holistic, normal person, holistic person, they can fake it, they fake it, and then they make it. And then you're struggling and they go, dude, just fake it till you make it, bro. And you're like, I can't fake it. I have no idea what it is. What am I faking? And our version of faking is way more obviously like, it's not, it's like being a really bad actor. And you're like making the movement. This is, this, I'm being happy right now. And people are like, whoa. That's not happiness, that's psycho psychotic. I'm being so sad right now. And then you're like, whoa, that's, that's deep, too deep, too, you're going too weird, too off. It's like you're, you're in a game of acting in the world. And there's this, there's this subtle place you have to get to. And you can get to it if you're young and you got energy and you can figure it out. Because honestly, I masked well for a long time, but then I got burned the F out because I was taking so much energy and I could only mask in a way that, how do I put this? I, I could only mask in a way that as long as I was just kind of quiet. If I was quiet, if I didn't actually talk to anybody, everyone and I mean, talked a little bit, but not deep. You know, because if I if we talked too much, if they if I revealed myself too much, they would see that I was weird, that I was different. So I could be around people. They wouldn't expect anything from me in terms of like, oh he's weird, he's different. But if I talk too much, if I engage too much, then eventually they'll go to the, get to the point of just going like, what? What? What are you? What are you? Are you? Are you an alien? Are you a robot? Is there something wrong with you? Like, and I, I learned that there must be something wrong with me, right? Until I, until something in my brain in the last like year and a half switched like the world turned upside down and all of a sudden I'm like you are the problem you are the problem it wasn't me it was you it was you all along I thought that I was the problem I thought that I needed to change but you it was your fault you did this you're a jerk you made me my, my life difficult you made my life difficult and I'm so To literally everybody you're all bad people and I want you to leave me alone I'd go so far as to call it cultural nobody would question why people shake hands until you travel to a place where nobody does it but when you're the only one that yeah I mean and isn't that what it is when you're the only one that doesn't 
shake hands, you're the weirdo, not the people who do it without thinking. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Our rules of engagement are all based societally, culturally, up, what's the word, top, top down. Everyone, holistic people, they all know the rules. They learn the rules, but you're seeing, you're not getting that cultural imprint. So you don't have the rules in your head the way that holistic people naturally gain the rules and without even knowing about it. So you're like, what do I do? I shake hand, shake hand, okay, yes. I mean, that's, that's how far I went. I'm like, let me, you know, I'd have guys being like, bro, let me show you the correct way of shaking a hand. Go like that, you know, imagine. Imagine these are like left, right, but you know, like our two right hands, you know, you gotta, you gotta get that, put that right there, and ah, uh, yeah, get that grip, get that firm grip. Oh, hello, sir, how are you doing? That's what it is. I would have, I would have guys really, really try and explain to me all these little subtle rules, and you know, without even explaining. Without even explaining why. It's just, this is just, this is how you show that you are a strong human being. And that's what's really important. You have to be, uh, in, I don't know. And yes, and this is what caused me to, to start trying to get outside the country and travel. Because I knew that if I traveled, I would be able to use my foreignness, like this person says. It gets worse than that because as a foreigner, you get to ask questions. As a foreigner everywhere, it's absurd for you to ask things. Nobody in this planet is ignorant of. So when you're a foreigner, you do get to ask questions. And everyone just goes, oh, well, yeah, you wouldn't know because you're a foreigner. However, and they don't know what you do know and what you don't know and they don't understand what you do know and don't know and and so they give you a lot of slack they cut you some slack the problem is that I found is that if you're away for too long if you're overseas for too long and they get used to you they begin to wonder wait right now they begin to realize just like people here if you mask well they eventually figure it out like, you're not a normal foreigner. I thought you were just a foreigner, but you're a weird foreigner. And then you're like, oh shit, you caught me. You caught me. Turns out I was autistic the entire time. We are humans living on an alien planet. We are aliens living on a human planet. I am a ginger ginger. I am a ginger, mutated DNA with blue eyes, mutated DNA with above average amounts of Neanderthal genes, and just what, and just was diagnosed with ADHD. I really do feel like an alien living on a human planet. I mean, I guess in a way, like everything is a mutated DNA. I was driving someone a long time ago doing Uber, and I had a more of a facial hair than I have right now, and I, so I was like, it wasn't huge, it wasn't long, but it was, apparently I have like a little bit of a reddish tint to my, to my facial hair, and she was like, oh, I like, I like the reddish tint, and I'm like, what, what are you talking about, and then I, I went home and looked, and I was like, oh yeah, sure enough, it is kind of reddish tint, you're right. And I got the blue eyes too. It wouldn't shock me if I've got some Neanderthal DNA. I got that Neanderthal ADHD. We're the cool ones. Honestly, Neanderthals are probably fucking better. You fucking these people. Holistics are just the worst. And they probably killed and are a are a PD'd. You know what I'm graped. They they did things 
Christ and my Neanderthal brethren. And that's how I came about into the world. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I bet I do. I bet I do have Neanderthal DNA. And I do believe I've heard that autistic people actually do have a plethora. They have more Neanderthal DNA in them on average. I don't know if I'm making that up. Yeah, and in my case, the more self-aware I become, the worse off my daily life is. I'm more confused about socializing and my place in the world now that I've than I've ever been. I wish I could go back to not being self-aware. I was always self-aware, and that was a problem. I honestly think, you know, there are other people in my family that are probably more ADHD than myself, and that was one of the reasons. I, so I guess to a degree I wasn't self-aware, but I would look at people, certain people, in my family, and I could tell that they were just, they were not masking very well. They were, I was like, why are you being such a weirdo, other person? And because I compared myself to them, I thought, well, I can't be autistic. I can't have these struggles. I can't, I'm not that way. But then I see them, or, or then I later on realize, like, yeah, maybe I'm not as obvious as that, and maybe I'm other person does lack self-awareness I try and explain to the person like you're you're autistic ADHD your kids are your kids are dealing with things it would be better for you it'd be better for everyone if you could real realize this but it's just not gonna happen and I do think I honestly think I probably would have been better with people in my life. I probably would have had more people in my life if I had less awareness because I was very aware. I was very able to see from their face, you know, like I could read people. I'm like, oh, you, you think that I'm weird. You think that I'm doing something off. I know I'm doing something off. I don't know what I'm doing, but I can tell that you're treating me weirdly. I keep hearing, I keep hearing people say we live in a simulation or a video game, maybe, but it feels like neurotypical people are part of the game. It's a lot like playing Mario Kart and being able to tell the difference between which players are played by real people and which ones are played by the computer because the ones played by the computer are played basically perfectly and the ones played by real people are making mistakes and getting their butts kicked. That really puts, that puts autistic people down a lot, don't you think? I get what these, I get the, the metaphor, analogy. Maybe it's more like uh, some people are playing Mario Kart, but we showed up, and we're like, just regular Super Mario. Like, we can jump. We can do like, you know, whoop, 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 you know, da, 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 da. we can do all the little dump jumps, and we can do the butt stops, and we can do all these types of weird things, and all the other people are confined to the car, and they're like racing each other. Just trying to see who <laughs> this is actually it kind of works in my head they're all racing each other they're all in competition mode who's going to be the first to pass the finish line meanwhile we're just outside of our, our outside of the cart this is being little mario just jumping around hopping around stomping on the on the koopa troopas whatever they are the turtles the butt stomping the uh, the Goombas but stomp and the Goombas and we're just playing around enjoying enjoying our life 3D running around 
off, off the landscape, off wherever. You know, we're, we're collecting stars. We're in the stars are rocks. We're collecting rocks. And meanwhile, everyone's and they're just going around and around, trying to figure out who who's gonna win the the race. And we're just like, yay, if you. Oh my god, that makes come back. That makes so much sense in my brain. We're just playing different games, and we're overwhelmed by the possibilities. We just want to collect them stars, get all those collectibles that Nintendo put into the game. And those other, those dumb people in their, their carts, they don't even know. They don't even know there's anything to collect. Stupid. Dealing with this facet every day of late, it seems, got made redundant and decided to only ever work for myself. And that's my problem. I'm trying desperately to make my, to work for myself, not for other people. But I don't have skills to, to work for myself. Self-esteem based on the feeling that you have hidden value and potential. I'd like you. I'd like you introduce you. Real world that refuses to show you the secret handshake. Oh, and an honorable mention to everyone else can verbally communicate like it's breathing air. Yeah, that hits. Especially with thinking that you've got potential. But the real world doesn't care about that. Just what you can do for it. Having autism and working with others is no fun. It's completely exhausting, even if you work with a decent, likable people. The constant masking is agonizing. I love those little guys. If you know what I'm referencing, I didn't mean to reference it. Those little aliens from Sesame Street, or whatever those were, or whatever, the Muppets. Okay, I've read enough, and I think I've talked enough, and thanks for watching. See you later. <laughs>